Rangers attack and game. How's it going YouTube? This is Drizzle. I wanted to do a video uh, about a software package I found from AMD that really improves uh, certain gaming performance on the Threadripper processor platform. So if any of you have purchased it or are thinking about purchasing it, uh, I have the 1920X Threadripper, which is the 12 core 24 thread version, and they go up to a 1950X, which is, uh, you know, eight, or excuse me, uh, 16, cores, 32 threads. Anyways, um, I noticed in gaming performance it really wasn't that good, uh, and even in like benchmarks that were, like the gaming portion of benchmarks, like 3D Mark Fire Strike, my benchmarks were pretty bad. Like they weren't even as good as they used to be on my old um, i7-5930K that I had. And that's like a four-year-old processor, so this thing should destroy it. The CPU test, it did great, but the graphics tests were pretty blah, and so was not real pleased with that, didn't know why that was happening, did a lot of uh, searching web forums and looking on Google, and finally I found a review from the site called, I think it's pronounced Anantech, and they had a review that uh, mentioned the Threadripper for gaming and how to get the better gaming performance out of it, you needed this program right here called AMD Ryzen Master, and I had not heard of that, so I went ahead and downloaded it. You can get it on the AMD website, it's a couple hundred megs I think to download, but it's just Google it, you can find it, or maybe I'll put a, a download link uh, in the in the bar under the video here after I'm done. But you load it up, it's going to warn you, you know, about how, you know, any kind of overclocking you do is at your own risk, of course. So, what do you got here? You have, you know, it shows all the cores that you have. Uh, you can get, basically control uh, memory voltage from here. You can control, um, like, how many cores are running different things like that, it's pretty interesting. So they have a creator mode, which will turn on all the cores. And you can choose how it controls the memory and some other things, whether it does simultaneous multi-threading or not. I'm not 100% sure how all these different features will affect performance for more in-depth uh, go at that. You probably have to read the documentation on the AMD website. This is a pretty simplistic video. I haven't spent a lot of time reading about how all the different features of this software works. Um, so if you have any questions, you can ask and I can try to look it up for you, but it'd probably be best to go to the AMD website and find the documentation uh, that comes with this software if you want that information. But like I said, uh, you get your temperature reading from your CPU right here. You know, it tells you what uh, clock frequency all your, your cores are running at. So you've got creator mode and game mode. Creator mode obviously turns out all the cores and is good for making video uh, clips and so forth. And, you know, anything CPU intensive, this is the way you want to do it. You know, if you're, I, I don't know what all programs people use for various purposes, but anything, like I say, video encoding especially, will use all the cores and threads your processor has to offer. So if you want to take advantage of that, you go into creator mode, you, uh, you click on that, you hit apply, it'll turn on all the cores, and then it'll ask you to reboot the machine, and when it does, it'll, they'll be actually fully active again. If you want to play video games, you go into game mode. And it lets you, you apply that, you do that, it says it was applied successfully. It does seem like you have to apply it each time uh, that you go into Windows. In that it's kind of already on from whatever you applied last. So if I left, like if I turned on creative mode or shut it off, when I came back, it'd still be in creator mode. If I shut it off in game mode and come back on, it's still in game mode, but it seems like the clock frequencies have to be reapplied each time you come back into Windows. So you just load it up and hit apply and it will apply your uh, overclocks. If you, this is if you don't want to do your overclocking in the BIOS. A BIOS overclock will be permanent unless you go in and change it or it becomes unstable and you get a blue screen or something. But basically what this does, let's see if I can read it. So see now on my current, what it says it is, half the cores are shut off. They're not totally off. What they do now is they just control the memory and they, uh, they handle the bandwidth dis distribution for the PCI Express lanes. Everything else is handled now. All the threading of applications is done through these six right here. And then, like I say, in game mode, you can go in and you can physically change these. I found if I go anything beyond like 4.3, it just hard locks the system up when I apply it. So there's probably, you probably need to go into the BIOS to do anything above like 4. Point, where I've got it now is about as high as I've been able to get it in Windows to keep it reliably stable. 
Um, you probably want to go in and start screwing around. I think you can actually do it from here, but I don't know how reliable it is. But you know, to give it more voltage uh, and tweak the, uh, the overclocking settings, you probably want to do it from the BIOS. But at least you can do some basic increase to your, core, uh, your clock frequencies here. So like I say, doing this really improved my uh, my be um, the word for? benchmark scores. Uh, future mark, or let's say three mark fire strike went from about a score of like 20 to 21,000 up to like 25 to 26 and I don't think I really even overclocked it to speak of. And it did definitely improve uh, gaming performance like in Witcher 3 for example I gained a pretty good frame rate uh, bonus like you know it, it depends on the game and what resolution you're running it at too. Like the higher the resolution you go it seems like a it was scaling the SLI a lot better because I run the dual 1080 Ti's and it was like I could shut one of them off and get almost the same results with uh, all 12 cores enabled but when I run it this way it seems like you get a much better frame rate. Uh, like, like I said Witcher 3 I gained probably 15 20 frames a second. Uh, it depends on resolution again so like I'm currently playing on a, a different monitor again I got the other day it's a 165 hertz quad HD uh, ROG Swift I the exact model number, it's like P27RQ or something like that, I forget, but whatever. It's 165 hertz, G-Sync, that kind of thing. But I gained a pretty good frame rate, even at 4K on the monitor I was playing before, I probably gained a good 10, 12 to 15 frames a second in 4K by switching it to this mode. So anyways, I know that doesn't show you a lot, but basically it's pretty useful software. If you are gonna buy a Threadripper and you wanna do some gaming on it, this is the software you need to download to make sure that you can run games uh, pretty well on it. And then, like I say, if you plan to go back and make a video or whatever it is that you're doing that requires the full availability of all 12 cores and threads, or 24 threads, or again, if you get the 1950X, it's more. But then you just go ahead and re-enable creator mode, reboot the machine, and you get access to all your cores and threads again. So with that said, uh, this is Drizzle as usual. If you like this kind of content, maybe give me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. If not, no big deal. Thanks for watching and have a great one. Bye.